in the fabled land of Northern California. Nestled in the Valley of Sacramento, two friends begin a journey to enlighten the world about their experience living life as a Zenial. But what is a Zenial, you may ask? If you wish to know, then follow them on their adventures. Welcome to the Zenio Chronicles. This is James. <laughs> Let's start that over. Why? You didn't like the... <laughs> No, we're keeping it. This Fine. is James. This is Mike. And this is apparently, according to Mike, our 25th episode. Well, I hope it is. Otherwise, I'm drastically completely off. I did counting, too. I went on the YouTubes. Oh, you counted counting, on the YouTubes? And I went the ones and the twos. Do I need to keep going? No, Three not necessarily. The, yeah, I counted them, too. I was kind of interested when you told me that it was going to be the 25th. I was like, seriously? We've done that many of them? Yeah. I was like, well, I, I, I just, I was counting up to the episodes that we were doing. I was like, son of a gun. It's already hit that quick. That's that's interesting. Yeah. I, I, I feel I feel somewhat accomplished. Yeah. I mean, I've, I don't think I've ever done any specific thing like this for this amount of time. No, no. Uh, I mean, it's it's pretty... Like, uh, I don't know. I, I I think it's really cool. Like, and I kind of feel like twenty five is. It's not like a major milestone. It's not a hundred. We'll do this at a hundred. Yeah, but well, we'll do it at the one year anniversary. And we'll do which it will at be a year. Like, yeah, uh, fifty two. Right. Is yeah, fifty two episodes. And then we'll do it at a hundred. And then we'll do it at like some random number, maybe a prime number. For all the super nerds that listen to us, <laughs> there are no super nerds that listen to us. But hey, we can hope. Can't are we? Are the prime numbers above a hundred? I don't hey, know hey, that. Any math nerds or any even just any, any <laughs> non math nerds who are smarter than Mike, comment. Let him know. It's yes. Okay, there's plenty. There's there are plenty. lots of prime numbers ab- above 100. Wow. Yes. Huh. Like, I did not know that. I don't know. 111. How's that one? I just pulled that out of my butt. Oh yeah. You're Try right to right. divide that by anything other than itself, and one. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Lots of prime numbers. There. I never really got deep and rich into the prime numbers game what was the highest math class you took first of all so that we can get a baseline here. uh i took trig i repeated you algebra did take one trig mm-hmm. ah. well algebra two and trig were thrown into the same class okay that's interesting that's mm-hmm. an interesting combination but that was the highest there was actually i think there was uh pre-calc was the next class and i was going to take pre-calc but i repeated algebra did you take oak math what the hell's oak math? Gee, I'm a tree. <laughs> oh. Hey man, I'm a dad. I get I get the right to do the dad jokes. Yes. Okay. I will I'll give you that one. Wow. I'm I'm impressed. Like, um, you know what's you know what's popular in my house when it comes to jokes? I'm what's doing that? a little little quick segue, then we can go back to talking about math. Knock knock jokes. Okay. Knock knock jokes are really popular. Um, my, my, uh, younger like boy, bad knock, knock jokes or no, knock, it's, knock just, jokes it's, in general? it's like the same ones over and over again. Okay. Um, because you, you, you teach, you <laughs> teach your kids a couple of jokes and they like to just do the same jokes. Um, well, the, they're new at this. My, 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 my younger boy, his favorite is the, uh, is the orange banana knock, knock joke. Oh you, yes. You know, you know, the orange banana. Yeah. But like, normally it's like you get, um, the, you know, you get banana, banana and then orange glad i didn't say banana right? right yeah when you do it with him it's like banana 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 <laughs> banana orange glad i didn't say banana <laughs> like seriously you get that it, it lasts for freaking ever it's like a oh, yeah. five minute long joke um, well he realizes the farther out he makes it yeah, the, well, the funnier just, it is at the end. For, well, it's funny for him. Oh we're, yeah, we're, we're just like, what the hell, dude? Screw but you, man. He's the one who just gets to still, think it's funny. It's still funny. My my personal favorite. I have two. First one is okay. Knock knock. Who's there? I love Doctor. <laughs> I love Doctor Who. <laughs> so do I. It's a great show, isn't it? <laughs> I like that one. And then the the, the other one that's the, that's my favorite. You actually have to start. Knock knock. Come in. <laughs> I love that uh, one. <laughs> I like doing that to people too. When they when they try to do a knock knock joke, they'll do the knock knock, and I'll be come in. I'm like, no, you do you not know how to do a knock knock joke? Maybe I don't. Anyway, sorry. Back to math. Back to math. Back to math. Back to math. Um. So geometry. Did you take? Did you take the geometry stuff? Yep, I took some geometry. 
I, you know, I've actually, I actually used. It's probably the last time I took geometry was like, well, technically I used a slight bit of geometry when I did some uh, studio design in college. Okay. I actually Light. used, I used geometry when I was ordering food. What? Pizza, dude. You pizza. don't use geometry to order food. You yes, just say you, you want something on it. No, the geometry is no, no. done by the, by the, no, by it's the not. chef. Okay. So sh- should you get two medium? 12 inch pizzas or one large 14 inch pizza? How many people are you feeding? <laughs> That's irrelevant. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Which one is going to be your better uh, amount of pizza? See, I would say the two involved. medium 12s. That, I, I'm they actually, also cost more than the one But actually, you're wrong. The 114 actually has more surface area of pizza. Interesting. Okay. Math. I know it's weird, but it's, it works. At least I think those are the right measurements. I, I will get the exact measurements, but I have yeah, but The pieces are so gargantuanly large and strange to handle. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> no, damn it, James. <laughs> Seriously. Hold on a second. Okay. First of all, if you get a pizza, right? Okay. No, actually, I'm just going to go back to your original question. What kind of a question is it for you to ask how many people you're getting the pizza for? I'm thinking of two mediums and one large. That's for one person. And if that's not for one person, you are not eating your pizza right, sir. Two mediums, that's that's enough for one person. One large, that's enough for one person. Again, if you are not eating your pizza right, that's your problem. Now, I'm not saying you're going to eat it all in one night. Hold on. I'm not saying you're going to eat all that pizza in one night or in one sitting. Okay, that's different. I'm saying that if I'm ordering a pizza, I'm ordering a pizza thinking I'm going to eat it that day. And I'm going to have it for lunch tomorrow. And I'll probably have it for an after dinner snack tomorrow as well. It's a lot of pizza. I'm fat. <laughs> point okay. being, point okay, being, okay. I'm just going to, I'm going to try to enjoy the pizza. Okay. It's like, it's hard for me to leave your house anymore after we do these podcasts and not go to the pizza place that we had pizza at and pick myself up a pizza. That pizza place is really That's good. That's pretty good. Although, you know what? I, again, we, we talk about different restaurants, so I guess it's okay promoting things now. There's a place in Yuba City. Okay. The Dancing Tomato. It's My kind sister of a, worked there. I think she works there now. Yeah, she may. It's kind of a mixture of an uh, Italian restaurant and like has a bunch of other food. Yeah. But they do a, a, a special from like four to six, a happy hour special of different foods. Mm-hmm. And they give you this eight-inch personal pizza. Nice. With three toppings for six ninety nine. That's a lot of food for seven bucks. Yes, and it's actually it, it's actually tastes like it. They have like a brick oven. I know Ooh. they. I, I don't. I, I don't think they do, but it tastes like they have a brick oven in there because mm-hmm. it's got nice kind of scorch almost on the bottom crust. Yeah, and the and the outside crust has a nice chew to it, but also a nice kind of crunch to the outside exterior of it. Legit, and it's it's really good. Not too bad on the sauce. More than enough cheese, and the toppings were, uh, I would say, fairly ample. I had a pepperoni, bacon, and mushroom. Wow! All which right, which are, are, I mean, the, no, I'm down on that. Those are good. Those are good. Yeah, toppings for you. absolutely, I mean, absolutely. I know you're, I know you're I a weird put, one that, that would probably put the ham instead of the pepperoni. Because you're, if I remember correctly, don't you like ham over pepperoni? Uh, I do. I don't like ham over pepperoni. I like ham with pepperoni. I, like I will also have ham with other things. But my favorite combination at least starts with the two foundations of ham and pepperoni. I may also add Italian sausage if they have yes. it. Right? More, the, ham, pepperoni, meat, Italian meat sausage. That's kind of my, bacon yeah. On. I'm gonna yeah, and I'm down with bacon. I'm I down love, with like bacon, like the bacon bits and that kind of stuff. I lo- uh, I d- oh, the, put, put, put the meat on the pizza. I like it. It's yeah, good. yeah. Me, I'm right there too. And now, don't get me wrong, the veggies are good there too. I'm um, interesting. I like the flavor of the veggies on a pizza, mm-hmm. but the consistency of the way that they're cooked, they give me a they give a weird like crunch to them, like the onions and the and the bell peppers. Mm-hmm. They give like a weird crunch to the to the bites that I'm not uh, overly fond of. I'm not I like really fond of them. onions on pizza, like white onion. The flavor onion. is good, but the actual onion itself is. Eh. You know what? The white onion I I can get behind. On that, I'm allergic to red onion, so I can't ever have that. Oh, good to know. Yeah, I remember that. But the bell I think pepper, I I'm that down from before because I think we had to make sure years ago that we made salsa and uh, or 
Pico and uh, made yeah. sure that we used white onion instead of the red onion for you. And which we I typically am a huge do fan anyway. of white onion and Pico. Yeah, we do. We, Pico I the mean, guy was awesome. We we do that anyway. But yeah. um, but no, thank the, you. The, the the meat on the the meat on the pizza. It that's that's the way to go. I now I I'm cool with some specialty things like uh I'll eat a like a chicken uh bacon artichoke pizza. Okay. Artichoke's pretty good on a pizza. Artichoke is really Spinach good on a pizza. Spinach can be good actually. on a pizza. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm I'm really more of a meat person when it comes to the pizza. You know, just throw this throw some meat on there. And and mushrooms. I, I don't know what it is. Mushrooms, even olives. They just work on pizza. Dude. Oh, okay. I was work, wondering what you were gonna say, because mushrooms and olives are dope on pizza. They are. They're good in a salad. They're good in a, olives mm-hmm. like make a sandwich. I don't know what it is, but like throw a little Dude, bit of olives yeah. in the sandwich, mm-hmm. and uh, you're talking like a Subway style oh, sandwich, God, yeah. like the open face sandwich. Or so something okay, like if that you're too. at if you're at Subway, what are you getting? What's your go to? Um, I will go with either. Now I'm I'm kind of plain when it comes down to the base meats, so I will either do like the the like the Italian or the cold cut combo. Okay. Okay. I start there. So you want multi- multiple meats? Yes, I, I'm a I, multiple meats guy. I will say this. I will say this for all our uh, all of our people listening that are full on carnivores. Mm-hmm. None, none of you vegans or vegetarians listening. You can cover your ears right now for all the horror <laughs> I'm about to do. The fact that we have the capability to do something that no other carnivore gets to do on this planet and eat multiple animals at one time <laughs> by having like a piece of roast beef and a piece of chicken and a piece of turkey and a piece of bacon. Like True. I thought of having a hamburger that was like hamburger patty, fried chicken patty, bacon, right? Um, I don't know, something to do with turkey, and then to throw another animal on there just so that we can get something else. Thought of putting some foie gras on there. Not a fan of foie gras, nor am I a fan of what has to be done to get foie gras. I'm not familiar with foie gras. Uh, fat, fatty uh, goose liver. They actually have to. Ooh. They actually have to okay. abuse the geese by uh, by force feeding them food. That's terrible. Until their liver gets all super fat, and then they, it's like supposed to be super rich, and I'd probably only do it once just to have it in the one burger because I think it's animal abuse. Uh, and yeah. while I love to eat animals, I don't want to abuse them for me to eat them. I just want to kill them and eat them as humanely no, as I get, possible. Yeah, it, uh, I, mean, I get so, that. But to have as many different layers of animal as possible, mm-hmm. like I love making sandwiches at home that have that. Have, have your roast beef, have your turkey, have your chicken, have your bacon on there. Yeah. And um, I mean, technically, I don't know if you consider eggs uh, uh, protein or not. I mean, let me rephrase: eggs an animal or not? Because, mm-hmm. like, I mean, egg would be another version of chicken. But anyway, um, point being, yeah. mm-hmm. point being, I love making sandwiches like that. So you have the cold cut combo or mm-hmm. the Italian mm-hmm. that has multiple meats, and then yep. do you veggie it all up or do you like? I add some veggies to veggie? it. Okay, so there's like two, there's two or three major sandwiches I get over it. So yeah. way. if I just want to ignore the possibility of being healthy in any which way yes meatball sub uh bread what bread uh i'm i do it on the i do it on the italian okay just the basic italian um you don't do it on the on the on the cheese and and that's the one the cheesy one yep okay okay. all right so i do that on the cheesy bread but then what i do is i do the meatball marinara with the provolone provolone okay Uh and i melt the provolone but then i add olives i add bell peppers i add um I, so you're kind of almost lasagnaing it, basically. Kind of, yeah. Kind of, yeah. Uh, it's and it's not too much added to it, but I will do like put some oregano on it, throw okay. some, you know. Uh, I if is they it had, really? A, is did it, have, it, no, they don't have parmesan there. Is it really I would oregano? Totally throw Mike? Is it really oregano? I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I, but, I I don't regulate their uh, <laughs> true. So, you, but you're not. But you're not like a monster and put like uh, mayonnaise and mustard and stuff like that on it. Oh Lord, no! Why okay, would good. you do that? That's disgusting. Dude, uh, no, I know a group of people. They put mayonnaise and mustard on a meatball marinara. No, stuff? they put mayonnaise on their chili dogs. When they do what? a chili dog, they open up the bun, they put mayonnaise down first, then dog, then chili, then cheese, and whatever else you might put on it. Mayonnaise first on the bun. The I'm only, get so the only much white condiment that belongs on a chili dog is sour cream. Or onions. Are those considered a condiment? No, nah, topping, so not quite condiment. Okay. I mean, so I throw some ca- sour you, cream. You throw a sour bit. cream on there? Sour cream, a little bit of cheese. Uh, not not a large amount, cream. a small bit of it. But yeah, no, no, I'm serious. Mayonnaise on the chili dog. That's interesting. It's a family thing. I've okay. never seen any other group of people do this. I'm going to get seen so that. much trouble for this, but uh, yes. I am shocked. It, it, it's, it's, it's shocking to watch it happen. It really this is, is. This is, uh, now, d- dude, 
hot dog uh real, real quick. hot dog connoisseurs by the way absolutely hate some of the things i do oh you catch up it I catch up hot dog. Yeah, ke- yeah. I, I catch up on a hot dog. I catch up hot dogs too. Depending, I'll catch up on a hot dog no. even if it's Chicago style. No, I don't hold care. Now, Len, if it's if it for me for me with that, it depends on how much money I paid for the hot dogs. So if I buy like the cheap like Bar S Franks, right? Then oh, yes, you're I'm, talking about you make I'm it. Ketchuping, and you're- I'm ketchuping and mustarding and putting chili dogging and whatever. Okay. If I go and spend money on like a really good hot dog that mm-hmm. doesn't have a normal brand name that has a jingle attached to it, <laughs> and I'm paying like for four hot dogs, I'm paying like 10 bucks. Okay. One, I'm the only person in my house eating those because I'm not sharing with everybody else because nobody gotcha. else I can see you there. appreciates hot dogs to the level that I do. Yeah. They'll, they'll eat them, but they don't appreciate them like I do. Right. And then I'm eating them with nothing because I just, just bun and hot dog because I want the true flavor. Right, of, right, of, right. Of what I'm doing, but back to your sandwich. So you, so if you're not okay. worrying about health at Subway, you're getting your meatball. I'm doing the meatball marinara with, and like the healthiest thing I'll throw on there is bell pepper. But okay. the rest of it's going to be like slathered in cheese. Give me extra sauce. Nice. Throw some olives on it. Nice. Throw nice. the oregano on it. Like yes, toast okay. the hell out of it too. So you're, you're a toaster. Yo, oh okay. yeah. Okay. Now okay. I'm no most of the time mild toasting, but I will toast the hell out of a meatball marinara. So the meatball you want, you want the yeah, toasting. Okay. yeah. Okay. okay. I want that thing like now see, yeah. Now see me. I have one thing I get when I go there. One thing, and this will be this again for the people who've actually gone to Subway with me mm-hmm. on multiple occasions. Mm-hmm. They will laugh at me reading it off because I'm very specific about my order, but I get the same thing every okay. single time. I don't want to guess this, so I want you actually to, go ahead and give me a guess. What do you think I get? I'm gonna I'm just, just gonna basic throw it out there yeah. and say it's a veggie delight. No, it's not. Okay, close though. Oh really? Close though. Okay, what do you want? I actually what get are you the, doing? I get the BLT. BLT is good. Not a whole lot of bacon in it. Now, I have doubled, and actually, one wonderful night, my wife went uh, with one of her sisters, because that's how things go usually. They went to uh, to Subway at one point to get us some food, and okay. she went and ordered it as a double to try to treat me. I think mm-hmm. it was near my birthday or near something, so she was trying to treat me by getting me the double bacon in there. Right. It was at the very end of the night when they were closing up. And they basically gave me all the bacon they had left because they were my wife and and her sister were like the last customer, so it was more like a triple bacon. Yeah. Oh my god, there was so much bacon in that sandwich. There was like almost a pound of bacon in that sandwich. Okay, that's it was awesome. So beautiful and a half. Yeah, it was so beautiful. All but down with that. I get the BLT. I get it with uh, with Swiss cheese. Okay. Because that's the only – the Swiss and the provolone are the only ones that I'll eat from Subway, but I like the Swiss the cheese. The rest of, it. like, American isn't really a No, it's not really good cheese. Thing. I'm not really – they're where, jack – I don't know what it Mike, is about their jack Mike, cheese. where I'm does American cheese belong? Where does American cheese belong, Mike? I don't know. Where does American cheese belong? In the yes. garbage. Oh, okay. Okay, so – Okay, I was, I was going to say, that's – so I get so the provolone, right? No, the, I get the Swiss. You get the Swiss. I get the, okay, I get yeah, the yeah, Swiss, yeah. but I don't have it toasted. Don't want the toasted bread. I want the soft bread. Okay. Um, the bread doesn't matter. Depending on how I'm feeling, I'll do the wheat. I'll do the uh, the regular Italian. I'll do the one with the herbs and cheese and whatnot. Yeah, the yeah, bread's yeah. not important to me. Um, uh, at least on a regular, I just change it up. The, the bread is the changeable thing. Okay. So mayonnaise, mustard, okay. Okay. and their chipotle. Oh, the chipotle stuff is great. Very good. Yeah. But then when veggies come around, I get lettuce, I get spinach, I get the bell pepper, I get tomato, if the tomatoes look good. Sometimes Subway's tomatoes look good, sometimes they look a little ugh. Okay. You know I mean? Yeah, yeah, you kind of got to, you got to feel those out, take a look at them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, olives, for sure. But the only things I don't get, and pickles, got to have mm-hmm. pickles on there. The only things I don't really get are the like banana peppers and the pepperoncinis. Oh, I love those. I don't, I'm not a big fan of, of okay. those. So I get everything else on there. So it's like a veggie delight uh-huh. with a little bit of bacon and cheese. I'm I'm okay with that. That makes that sounds yeah. pretty good actually. It, uh, it is because it's like you have a you have a salad bread with a little bit of bacon flavor in it. Yeah, okay. it's amazing. I get the same thing basically every single time I go in there. It's rare. I, I think the last time I had a different sandwich from Subway was probably about ten years ago. What'd you have? Do you remember? It was a meatball. Oh, okay. That was cool. the only other thing I used to like. I 
long time ago. I have ago, to be in the mood for a meatball sandwich. Yeah, so, so did I. And a long, long, long time ago when I first started going to Subway, I was very sheltered when it came to my my childhood, when it came to uh, fast food places. Mm-hmm. My mother was very selective about the fast food places we went to. So I went to like McDonald's and Burger King and Jack in the Box. But like- How else, selective? Yeah, anywhere else we were not uh, branching out from. It was just the standard. So you never did like Taco Bell? You never did A&W? Uh, never Taco Bell. A&W only if my dad took us somewhere and not my mom. Oh, okay. Um, KFC sometimes with my mom because she liked the chicken. Yeah, KFC. But like uh, um, uh, Heart Attack Central. Um, uh, Which one? Long John Silver's. Sorry. Never got to oh, go there as oh, a kid. Oh, wow. Really? Uh, oh, never man. Never got to go there as a kid. Um, Hush puppies, bro. And, oh, yes, I know. Uh, Taco Bell, my mother. My mother's the type to put ketchup on tacos, man. That's not somebody going to take his Taco Bell. I know. Ketchup on tacos. Ketchup on her people, eggs, too. People are getting... Oh, yeah. I, I, okay. Ketchup on eggs makes more sense than ketchup on tacos. No, I know. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I mean, like, people get on me for putting ketchup on a hot dog, man. I was... Ketchup I, on a taco? Yes. I, well, hold on now. You broke on me, now. man. You've made you've made hot dogs into burritos before, technically. You're damn right, and they're actually not half bad. That's still technically bread. Yes. I will take a hot dog, I will wrap it in a tortilla, and I will throw that in the microwave, especially when I'm high. And it's fantastic when I do that. I will the, just let you know right now. <laughs> the, the lesson we've learned, Mike gets high. Moving on. Not on a regular <laughs> basis, just every once in a while. I, and when I do it, I'm extremely careful, just in case. Confession to my parents, if you're listening. When I do smoke, and it's, it's not like a big deal, it's legal now, but it's, when I do smoke, it's like once every six months, and I'm making sure I'm not doing no, a if damn you, thing. If you have, if, if, you're, if your parents are really honest with themselves, they're probably like, really? Yeah, really? that's the worst Poser? you do? That's the worst? Come yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. I'm and disappointed I, and, in and I you. bet you they're... <laughs> <laughs> no, I bet you they're fine with that. Yeah, but, that's um, me. That's my my stoner my stoner meal is like I smoke a bowl, I have a hot dog wrapped in a tortilla, <laughs> a bag of Doritos, and I'm playing video games and I'm just like till I fall asleep. I I, I worry because I've never I've never done that enough to have any kind of a meal involved with it. Oh well, no, I you don't it a plan. You just do that. No, I, <laughs> that's the thing. I, You're not going to cook anything. No, I I I, I am fairly positive. That it would be for me. It would be cereal, and I would literally eat like every cereal in the in the house. All the cereal, and, probably okay. in one giant no, totally. bowl. Yeah, all the cereal and combine the whole them all. Of milk. <laughs> I could totally see me doing that, dude. Yes, okay. See, and that makes perfect sense. Or if there's ice cream, the all of the ice cream would be gone. Okay, and not just I. I do mean. All of the ice cream. It you would, would take all of the ice cream, scoop it all out of the pints no, that there no, are. No, You're going to have a no, six pint no, bowl. No. What? No. Why no. would I scoop it out of the pints? That's a waste of time. <laughs> oh, I would you just, just have open like the three different oh, things in front them, of like, me and eat them. them. <laughs> like, yes. On a table. That I will flavor, try another. flavor let's number do, three. Let's do these two together. <laughs> Believe me, sir. If I, you you would you would be both astonished and probably disgusted by how quickly <laughs> I can eat a pint of ice cream. It's ah. it's it's a it's a thing. I can it's I can understand. <laughs> I can understand. I you know I don't tend to go for I don't tend to go for ice cream that often. I know why. I don't know. Oh, dairy. You 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 are. You, no, you I'm not. Why, we, Ooh, we got non dairy ice cream. Yeah, stuff. Halo it's Top. Not, have you seen those? Yes, That's, we have some Halo I Top tried, right now. Which one did you try? My favorite one is um. There is a chocolate banana. Tastes straight up like the Astro Pop from the ice cream truck, man. Those are killer. Um, the Astro they, Pop, yeah, remember, not the not the red, white, and blue Astro Pop, but the 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 chocolate and banana Astro Pop. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It tastes just like those, really, except it's made with like coconut milk or something like that. Okay, and um, it's awesome. I tried a gingerbread cookie one. Okay, I bought a gingerbread cookie one for me to try, and then bought for the wife a birthday cake. Birthday cake is good. Really? Yes. Because to me and my wife, birthday cake tasted like play doh. Whoa! Really? And we threw that crap out. But she, was the she liked the gingerbread cookie? The gingerbread one. cookie. She didn't like it. Cool? Like she didn't like okay. it enough for me to buy I'm it down again. With, I'm down with birthday cake. I've had birthday cake. It's good. They do also have a dairy birthday cake that's actually quite a bit better. Well, I personally, mean, I think it's better. The consistency of the yeah. Because one this, of the things I I'm I'm kind of down on is you'll find ones that are made with almond milk, and then you'll find ones that are made with coconut milk. And the I consistency is different. The consistency, and you can taste the coconut aftertaste. Uh, I can taste, like, 
I taste the coconut aftertaste yeah. in like coconut milk or whatever in, in, in coconut based dairy alternatives much more than I taste the almond aftertaste. Okay. For some reason, the almond aftertaste just gets masked better by the flavors you put in it. And maybe it, it's also, it also may be more of a pleasant aftertaste as opposed to a, a sharp, I wouldn't say pleasant is the wrong word, more of a dull aftertaste as opposed to the sharp aftertaste that you're going to get with coconut. Yeah. Coconut, coconut is a like you know, flavor. yeah. There is, yeah. Coconut resonates like yeah. a lot more after you have now, it. I've, I mean, I've tried various uh, like low calorie, low sugar, uh, low fat ice yeah. creams before you give and it they a just, shot they you just know? don't measure up entirely because i'm like i'm a hagen dazs and ben and jerry's type of guy ben and jerry's though oh, is dude, a little is is a little difficult for me because i have to find the right mix because i don't like the multi-texture stuff uh for like okay. so like it's mm-hmm. so like if there's junk in my ice cream it bothers me a little bit okay so like oh really oh, well, like one of my favorite ice cream flavors is cookies and cream i love cookies and cream ice cream right. but i don't like eating cookies and cream ice cream because there's the big chunks of freaking cookie in there, and it's a different oh, I texture. Love those. I love different those. whole thing. See, you know, I, see me, I, I'm see, I'm down on like moose tracks and like peanut butter cup ice cream. Yeah, see, I really, Bro. I really love like frozen yogurt that's uh, cookies and cream flavor because it's one Cause consistency get, oh, all the same okay. through, and you get the same flavor. Um, one but, thing I'm all about too is they make uh, one. Halo Top does have it. I've had it. It is a non dairy, and it's made with almond milk. And I swear I've had it like once. It's the chocolate with peanut butter swirl in it. So okay. it's chocolate ice cream with peanut butter swirl. See, I can into deal it. with I can deal with some swirl Dude. sometimes. Like um, uh, every, not peanut butter ice cream. It's just straight yeah. up peanut butter in it. Ben and Jerry's puts out every year a uh, pumpkin cheesecake ice cream. Ooh, that's got it's got the it's pumpkin cheesecake flavor, and then it's got a graham swirl in it. Like a graham pepper oh. swirl in it. Oh, dude, I go through like three or four of those every every holiday season. All right. Like yeah. everybody else has their like, p- people buy their eggnog and their, you know, their cookies and their yeah. candies of different kinds. I, from from right around Thanksgiving till after Christmas, I am buying pumpkin cheesecake, uh, Ben and Jerry's. And I, I get you. I the crap out of those. I always do, like when the holidays come around, my, my big deal is like, uh, um, I always get the spiked eggnog. I try everybody's spiked eggnog. I see. I'm not an eggnog fan. It's just too not thick. on a regular eggnog, and they do have nog alternatives. So what I end up doing is I'll, I always like head to like a like a, I head to quote unquote bigger box liquor stores like Total Wine or something, because the thing about Total Wine is they will, they actually work with local places from yeah. across the country. So the small wineries, the small um, bottling, you can get some small you know, batch stuff, that's, small batch that's stuff from that's just like killer. Pennsylvania or something. Yeah. And get it here because of the buying power. And nobody have. knows. Yeah. Nobody knows who it is, but it's like killer quality stuff for like, for like 75% of what a big box equivalent would yeah. be a lot of the time. So I love that stuff. But um, my, um, I always go to them and I find the really good brandy. Okay. And then I take that and I throw it in like some almond eggnog. Okay. And that's, dude, that's, that's where I go, man. It's still, it's just a, it's a thickness issue. Eggnog is just or such almond a nog or drink whatever. To me. And yeah, I, it feels like I'm, I'm chugging snot. So, <laughs> well, okay. Yeah. Although I can I've understand been, I've been there with, uh, well, with that's the thing about eggnog. It's egg has egg, yeah, it it's, has, it's raw egg white. So it's like yeah. got a mucusy consistency yeah. to it. And I can understand that. But when you're talking like it's done with like almond instead, you still, don't get that sliminess. Still, it's I, it's creamy, it's, but it's not slimy. I can see that because consistency obviously is is a major issue for me. For sure, yeah. Like like I the understand. idea of people putting fruit in their cereal. What the hell is that about? I have no well, trouble with that, marshmallows in my cereal. Freaking fruit in your cereal. I can Come understand on, especially that. bananas. Bananas are all soft and squishy, and you dump put those in milk and then I don't know. I'll have cereal. to. I'll have to. Uh, <laughs> I gotta disagree with you on that one. So disgusting. I'll throw some chopped up bananas in like life cereal or something. And see, like it's that. funny. I can deal with pizza and all the various toppings as long as they they're not too crunchy. Yeah. But like, yeah, life cereal, such a Mikey, such Shut a up. Mikey. I, that was the first one that came to mind too. That's funny. I didn't even think about that. One. <laughs> well, it's, it's one of your favorite cereals. It is one of my favorites, <laughs> as we discussed on an earlier podcast. Yes, indeed. Cinnamon Toast Crunch is good with bananas in it too. I mean, I can see the flavor, the flavor profiles working together. I can yeah. see that happening, but at, at the same time, it's just crunchy little squares of cinnamony goodness um, <laughs> with uh, squishy bananas. I just don't <laughs> squishy bananas. I, it's, it's, they're squishy. <laughs> they're just uh, this. Uh, uh. Although interestingly, I can't eat cinnamon toast crunch anymore. 
it's a funny you bring it up. Um, well, you you know, I've that, cocked my head to the side in you know, confusion. You, you, you obviously can't the, see that, yeah. but I'm just going to tell people. You know, you, you know that I'm I I, ha, I do have a few millennial hipster traits. Just a couple. Okay. I, I have a couple of crappy hats that I wear that follow into uh, either millennial or hipster uh, cultural things, but I also am one of those people that uh, that vapes. Oh, Vaping okay. is a big oh, deal for okay. me. Yes. Boy. I, I do it quite regularly. You know what? I'm sure that I have habits that you would completely destroy logically, so I'm just going to leave you no, alone. No, go ahead. Come at me with it. Come at me. I've, I've never been a fan of vaping. That's it's okay. Just, it's I, Dude, I I went to a family reunion recently, and like my great aunt was vaping, and she's like <laughs> she's like 78. And Sweet. It's the weirdest what was she rocking? Thing. I don't know. I don't know how to... I don't know the vape thing. Were they boxy? Vape was culture. It, was it a boxy thing? Although my thing, cousin and my brother a, were vaping, and there were a bunch of people was vaping. Was it a boxy like, thing, or was it more of like a pen? It was like pen? one of the little... No, it wasn't a tiny pen. She had one of the... like One of the boxes? Holding that, yeah, that thing took up a fist. Yeah. Like she's She ain't no lightweight. No, that's nice. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah, no, I... She probably that's some about, she's, yeah. she's probably sub oming on that thing. Nice. Yeah, I, she's what? Sub oming. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I know because you're not a vapor. Okay. Uh, it has to do. With, it has to do with the build of your of the coils. Uh, oh, I don't know how okay. vape, vape let me, work. Let me explain to you how vapes work. Okay. Basically, you have a coil of wire. Okay. That gets heated up. Mm-hmm. You make the coil. You make the you, either the coil is made. Typically, it's made. Most people buy pre-made coils. Mm-hmm. Inside the coil, this coil of wire is some kind of a. Uh, typically it's a cotton product that soaks up the juice. Okay. It soaks the juice into the cotton product. When the wire heats up from the battery, he okay. running a current through it. Okay. It vaporizes the juice that has been soaked up into the cotton. And that's what's coming out is as the, Hot vapor. as the vapor is, is the vaporized. Uh, it's usually, um, vegetable glycerin or, uh, what's the PG stand for? Uh, Basically, it's the same type of actual liquid delivery system that doctors use when they when they have you do some kind of an inhaled uh, medication. Not the inhalers specifically, but like because that I'm just sure shoots. I'm sure you've seen the the uh, where, where people are getting like a steamy inhaling steam type treatment, inhaling mm-hmm. vapor type treatment. Mm-hmm. The the suspension liquid that they use for people to do that that they put the medication in mm-hmm. is the same stuff. It's propylene glycol. That's what it is. Propylene glycol or vegetable glycerin. Those are the suspension liquids. So it's ba- you're basically inhaling the same rough liquid. Propylene glycol is one of those. Um, yes, it's used in antifreeze, but it's also used in food preparation. Yes, it's one of those things that just has some weird properties to it. But keep in mind, dihydrogen monoxide is used in antifreeze as well. And if you inhale it, it'll you kill cannot you. equate propylene glycol with water. Don't you dare think you, that you could, can like just but- no. You cannot equate them. Propylene glycol is not water. I'm no, I'm not, not going to back down on that. You can't, you can't drink it and 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 mass quantities and be okay. But as far as using it for, I don't know. For it depends vapor, on how many. Just it could. depends on how many shots of fireball you had. True, but um, <laughs> no, it, it it's the same kind of delivery system they use for inhaled uh, medications and the same interesting uh, okay. factor. Um, and then you have the flavoring that's added in, and then the nicotine amounts. And the nicotine amounts range from very high uh, amounts of nicotine that's added right. into it, or very low amounts. For instance, I'm one of those people that has the lowest possible amount of nicotine that you can have in there, because it actually does make a difference in the flavor. And if you have no nicotine, it tastes kind of funny. Okay, so I got a, a question a weird for you. Then. Yes, I have a question for you. Yes. So people, you, okay, I'm going to I'm Go just ahead. going to state to you. Go ahead. Why one of the things that I one of the things I I'm not a fan of vaping, which is fine. And, and keep in mind, is that people I, are saying that it is an alternative to smoking? No, it's not. Really, people are saying, "Oh, I've quit smoking. I just vape now." You're in denial. No, no, hold on, no, hold on, hold on. Like th- that's what they, it comes off like. Yes, but there, but in the in the same way that people stop drinking and they because they found God, it's the same type of thing. No, because yeah, the difference between the two is that one's a physical chemical. Well, okay. You're right. The addiction to nicotine is typically still there. There are there are people who have used uh, vaping to dial themselves down to an almost negligible amount of nicotine. Like, I've never seen somebody that vapes and then quits vaping because they've finally gotten um, less nicotine. Well, because, because, the, because what they've done is they've reduced the nicotine 
the nicotine addiction, some of them can reduce the nicotine addiction uh-huh. to either like a three milligram or a 1.5. Like 1.5 is where I'm at. Three okay. milligram is one of the other lowest, more common lowest settings. You okay. have to order, you have to buy specialty stuff to get the 1.5 because that's really low. Okay. Uh, but three is, is usually the most common low okay. number that you get. Most smokers, when they start coming off of smoking and trying to, Smokers who try to use vaping as a way to stop smoking right. typically will start at like 12 milligrams of nicotine right. in their bottle and then move the, move down to three. Eventually, the goal is to try to move down to nine, then to six, then to three, slowly move yourself down. Yeah. The thing is- I understand tapering vaping, yourself vaping, down. Vaping but. is not going to, to stop the addiction to nicotine. Right. Vaping is a replacement for the addiction to nicotine. Right. That has less. Now, the words I'm saying are very, very careful. Okay. Less proof at this point, because it's still such a young thing. There's yeah. still not a whole lot of long term studies done on it. Okay. So I know that there may be a possibility that long term studies show later that there's more damage that it does than what we've been able to show in any short term studies. Okay. So I'm, I'm just trying to be re- realistic about this. I understand that we may see stuff later that shows that it's worse than what we think it is. But at this point, vaping has been proven in the studies they've done to do less damage to your body than what the chemicals that you inhale from smoking cigarettes do. So what it is, it's a way to manage the addiction to nicotine by reducing the nicotine amount and reducing the carcinogens that you're inhaling into your body. Okay. Is it, is it, is it getting off of cigarettes complete or is it, is it getting off of nicotine completely? No, you're replacing another nicotine source very much like the gums do. And uh, your yeah. nicotine comes with nicotine patches. You're replacing it with a different source mm-hmm. of nicotine that is at this point deemed to be a healthier delivery system of the nicotine than the than what you're getting from the cigarettes. Because the nicotine was only one part of what you got with the cigarettes. Mm-hmm. You're dealing with all the various carcinogens from just the burning of a of a. Uh, living product burning of the leaves of the tobacco right that's already putting different chemicals into you right totally and damaging your body and yeah. then you have all the different preservatives and other things that they put into the tobacco to be able to give it a long shelf life okay all of these things are being are being vaporized and inhaled when you're smoking the cigarettes so what vaping gives you is again at this point with the current uh studies that have been done a healthier healthier, not healthy, but healthier yeah. alternative to your nicotine delivery system while okay. also taking care of, and this is the key, mm-hmm. taking care of some of the psychological components that are added to the, the cigarette addiction. Because not only is the addiction to the nicotine and the actual, the, 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 in, the, uh, ingesting into your body mm-hmm. the, of the, of the nicotine and the, the, you know, just the chemical parts of it. There's the actual physical act of doing the smoking, the right. inhaling of a vapor, having something in your hand, having something in your mouth. Yeah. All of these things are part of that addiction yeah. that the vaping helps to give in a way that the gum and the cigarettes don't. They mimic much of the experience of the, of smoking so that you can tackle both the physical addiction of the nicotine and the psychological ceremony almost the psychological things that come with it yeah in a way to try to have a healthier delivery system for your nicotine is it getting people off of nicotine completely some people maybe but that i don't think that that's where it's real um help is in yeah i haven't I think seen it's more, somebody I, do that yet i think I haven't it's seen more somebody quit vaping no because honestly because quite frankly once you uh, if you've been smoking forever and that's been uh, you know for a good portion of your life mm-hmm. and you have all that psychological stuff involved in it you have mm-hmm. the nicotine addiction involved in it to break away from it completely is very difficult to do yes to and i'm not trying to i'm no, not, I'm not to trying to downplay a, that yeah. at all i understand that it's an extremely to have, difficult to have process. something that's a that's a even moderately healthier alternative mm-hmm. that still gives you all of, that that can fill all of those again those psychological those physical needs that you have for having had the addiction already right it's an easy way to deal with it it's I an can, easier okay. way to, it's an easier that's way to deal with it and it can, all right all I right mean, and that's i guess that's, i can give you that on and uh, that's why i can, I can see that, the people man. still still continuing vaping is it still fills all those needs and more importantly here's my here's my question you've never seen them stop vaping right how many people have you seen that have been smoking cigarettes mm-hmm. that have gone to vaping that have gone back to smoking cigarettes well i have seen some people do that there are some yes but 
There are some that haven't. Well, here's the so thing. So for some people, I will see it can people. Work. Here's here's the here's the yeah. issue that I take with that. I have seen people that go from smoking to vaping. Yeah. And then when their vape pen runs out, they go get a pack of cigarettes. Well, and that's and part of that is because they're, or they're they not, bum a stoke from somebody else. And part of that is it has to do with the the method in which they uh they do it. For instance, the method that I use for vaping, mm-hmm. I have a more expensive dual battery. Uh, they call them mods. Mm-hmm. The the box that you use for that's the actual uh that does all the work basically it has the computer chips in it it holds the batteries okay it's what transfers the power into the uh into the coils okay um and then I have like a, a pretty heavy duty tank that has the coil in it and you put the juice in okay um and up until recently I actually rebuilt my own coils I'd make my own coils oh, cool. with wire uh just wrap the wires. Get them in. You have an ohm meter to check what kind of ohms are going through the, mm-hmm. the coils. Um, you probably know the electrical side of that better than I do. I just know I need to hit certain numbers, and I have to wrap the coil a certain number of times to hit those numbers. Yeah. And those numbers work perfectly for me. And then I send a, I, I dial in the machine to send a certain wattage through the coils mm-hmm. to give me what I need. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. That, oh, I mean, that's, that, so that my I can system, understand. My You're system just generating is generating heat inside of a tiny little yeah. Compartment. My, my system is a more advanced system, and you pay a little bit more for the more advanced. Mm-hmm. The pins are the pins. They they when they run out like that, those are those are definitely cheaper methods. If you want to be, I would say, if somebody's wanting to be successful, stopping smoking uh, cigarettes by using vaping, replace using vaping to replace their cigarette smoking. Mm-hmm. I would say it's worth the investment of getting a decent mod and a decent tank. Um, especially because it's cheaper than uh, getting a decent modern tank is cheaper than buying a full carton of cigarettes anymore. Hmm. Uh, okay. I mean, seriously, you can buy a decent modern tank for like 60 bucks. You can't buy a carton of cigarettes for 60 bucks anymore. I'm not talking a pack. I'm talking a full carton. No, I understand. You can't Question buy it for that. that. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, before we, before going back to what I was talking about earlier, yeah. I can understand the possibility of it being useful. I've never seen the execution actually happen that way. No, I, which and as far as yeah. here's the thing, it's nice to hear from you that I mean, I I still like I have never seen the example. I, I from this point, I I can't necessarily consider it because it's such a young. Um, it is. It's, it's, still, it's, it's, it's such still a young new. practice that I I don't understand where people will call themselves that they have quit smoking because they're vaping even though they're not lighting up something on fire and breathing well, smoke into I, I their lungs of, I, I think part of that is 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 and people wanting wanting that's just not to, for not to over count uh people that um not to over count people that use like nicotine gum and stuff no. i had uh, uh my my stepdad actually quit smoking uh, using nicotine gum, yeah. but he did it multiple times before he finally quit. And when he did, he used nicotine gum and then swapped it with regular gum. And it does take care of a nervous habit that does, he has, which, but which he still the, buys regular gum. Yeah, it took care of the oral fixation part of the, mm-hmm. of the habit. Now, I understand the vaping does take care of that it can. portion of it, I, but it's it can, still yeah. not a replacement. No, it's not really a replacement for – the thing is it can be a replacement just like your dad was able to transition from the nicotine gum to regular gum and be able to still use that as kind of a, a enough of a, getting that oral fixation, getting that right. that, that, uh, that obsession with, with something happening in the mouth down. Mm-hmm. Um, well, do they have a nicotineless some, vape? Yes. They do? Oh, yeah. You can, get, you can get vape with no nicotine. That's what I was saying. You can get vape with zero nick. Oh. Completely zero nick. You can have no nicotine. It tastes different. I I will say that. Leaves, I would understand. To me, that. it leaves a weird aftertaste in your mouth. It doesn't feel as it feels almost thin. Okay. When you're vaping it. But well, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. The nicotine get, is a tar. Get, yeah, you can get completely completely zero nick juice. Huh. No problem. I'll be damned. Yeah. So I mean. Okay. So there can, are those alternatives. It's yeah. Just, and this this is something that I'm not necessarily well, no, like. This is a culture I'm not privy to. So. I can say I started vaping specifically to give myself a low grade nicotine addiction. Now, most people think that's crazy, but I didn't want to start smoking. I was at a point in my life where I was having a lot of stress in my life, a lot of things going on. I was worried about smoking. But I was, doesn't nicotine you know, was, drive up your stress level and your blood pressure? Yes and no. It, it can it can do it can either give you more stress or it can actually be soothing for people. I mean, don't get me wrong. So does drinking. Yes. And I drink. So, you Dr- know, well, I'm drinking, not trying to go pot act kettle act here, but. Drinking can act in both ways. It can make you, for the time that you're doing it, it can be, it can act as kind of a, a euphoric type thing. Yeah, but. And then yeah. afterwards, it, it, it's where the things hit. Well, yeah, so exactly. It's a, it's a you mixed, can't, don't, don't, don't imagine you're actually, if you think you're sleeping well, you're not sleeping well. But I, 
I was worried at that point that because of the pressures that were happening in my life, I would start smoking. Uh, uh, not, so you and kind not even of, cigarettes necessarily. I, you know, you so know, you're from seeing previous, the desire to smoke, but you well, wanted to curb that as and, much as possible. Yeah, and you know from previous that I'm a cigar smoker, yeah, occasionally, and yeah. I'm a pipe smoker occasionally, yeah. And I didn't want either one of those to become more habitual, ha- habitual than they are. No, because those are powerful as hell. The, those, those were. I was worried too much about again the the smoking concept of it. I was worried that I was going to be smoking my pipe more, smoking my cigars more, or deciding gotcha. to get into cigarettes and smoking cigarettes to try to have something to fill that time and that that need of something that's understandable i can i can understand using that as a way to curb something that you kind of foresee yeah this that's is, respectable actually that's very respectable i can this was I my one way that. to i felt kind of get control of it before it became an issue yeah totally before it before it happened and that's why i started doing it cool okay and so all right i can get behind that now i you know what i am going to give you a first mike what was that I don't even know why we got on the topic of vaping. We just kind of been, we just kind of been rolling. That was funny. That's fun. well. Normally, you know, I can come back to the conversation and know where the conversation was. I but believe we, we started vaping. with pizza. Well, there was that. I was, I was, I was mentioning vaping as being a millennial and hipster thing, but I don't know why. Eh. Who well, cares? you said vaping and oh, well, you said something else you did that was millennial hipster. I think you said something about funny hats. Yeah, I have a few hats that would maybe fall under millennial or hipster. What kind of hats? Um, like the it's not quite a fedora style hat. It's got a little bit bigger brim than the fedora style. Hat. Oh, okay. You remember the kind I used to wear back when I was, we were working at Blockbuster? Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I, have, I still have one of those. Yeah, but you were doing that before it was like a hipster thing. Oh my uh, god, you were hipster before hipster. You don't even know, bro. <laughs> you don't even know. I've I've told you before. Square donuts. Square donuts. Square donuts. Where the donut is square and there's a donut hole in the middle that's square. Okay. Mm-hmm. I had that idea in high school. It's in my yearbook, my senior year yearbook. I have a friend that actually drew a picture of a square donut in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, yeah. Anyway, he drew a picture <laughs> of the square donut in there. I had this wonderful idea. Watching Food Network one day, some dude in New York City had square donuts in his freaking donut place. You're like, damn it. Yeah. Could have made a fortune. One month before I went to see a movie, I only went to see it because I only got to see the movie because I was in watching the movie The Mummy with Brendan Fraser. Mm-hmm. We went, we watched The Mummy because it was one of the first movies to have the uh, episode one uh, trailer on it. Nice. This was back in the days, kids, before you could find trailers for movies on YouTube mm-hmm. or anywhere online. Uh-huh. So you had to go to movie theaters to watch the trailers. Or you had to rent a movie. Or you had to rent a movie to you watch rent the trailers. rent a movie, see the previews, or fast forward through them. So- went to watch the mummy um in this in, at the near the end of the mummy where like they're trying to get back to uh Hamanoptera, and the mummy is like a big tornado thing in the oh, sky yeah, okay. and mm-hmm. they're flying a plane and the, fly- mm-hmm. the the film caught on fire and burned oh wait no it wasn't the mummy i am sorry it was not the mummy that happened in the mummy but there was another movie we were watching that day i that just had a remember. tornado no that had the film burn oh okay what was that film burned at the same at, at roughly about the two-thirds of the way through the film it was in the exact same theater too that's hilarious. It was actually Wing Commander. Oh, man. Yeah. Wow. Wing yeah. Commander. That was the one that was the PC game series that was turned into a yeah, film series. Yeah, Freddie Prince Jr. and uh, Matthew That's Lillard. That's right. Yes. Oh. So beautiful. Not since Scooby-Doo has there been such a this powerful is pre, duo. This was pre-Scooby-Doo. Oh, this, this is, is pre-Scooby-Doo. pre-Scooby-Doo. Oh, oh yes. man. This is like... This is so pre-Scooby. this is like this hot is on the heels Scooby. of Starship Troopers and stuff, yes. right? Well, oh, they weren't man. in Starship Troopers. No, they weren't, but okay. no, no. Starship Troopers was like Casper Van Dien and like a lot of those other uh MPH. Oh, that's right, MPH was in there. MPH is in there. Um Um Oh god, the Kurgan. Uh the Mr. Kurg- Crab. Uh can't really? think of his name. Yes. The Kurgan and Mr. Crab are the same person, you know that, right? No. Mr. Crab from uh SpongeBob Square. Yeah, 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 yeah. Same guy. Wow. Same guy that's the Kurgan from Highlander is the voice of Mr. Crab. Really? Yeah, he's he's drill sergeant Dim. Or Zim. <sighs> Yeah. Oh. Oh no, jo- the yeah. bald guy? No, the no. drill sergeant that throws the knife into Jake Busey's hand. <gasps> oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's Mr. Krabs. Why why do we need a knife in a nuke fight? <laughs> Put your hand on the wall. <laughs> yes, that's the voice of Mr. Krabs. That's awesome. Um anyway though, it was Wing Commander we were watching. Yeah. Film burns. We leave that we leave that theater. This, this theater is, sounds like a terrible theater. It was it was the old movies eight in Yuba City. Oh, that's the one I saw Lord of the Rings at. The old movie's eight, before they rebuilt it. Oh, never mind. No, I saw it after it was rebuilt. 
We race from Movies 8, which if you remember roughly where that was, same mm-hmm. location as the new one is, mm-hmm. but it, we race from Movies 8 all the way to Plumas Street, Okay, because the, the theater there on Plumas Street was still working at that time. To Did see you it. go to watch the rest of Wing Commander? No, we went to watch another movie that was starting right then. Oh, cool. And it also had the episode one trailer. So we got to see the episode one trailer <laughs> twice in one day. But we went to go see this movie, and this is an amazing movie. We were watching, and we were just like, whoa. What was it? It was The Matrix. I And did, as I'm watching this did, movie- I actually kind of wanted first, to guess The Matrix. And the first bullet time sequence happens with the whole bendy backwards and crap. Oh, and you saw that in the theater. And I'm looking at my friend, my friend Rob, and he's looking back at me because a month earlier- I had talked about how doing a filming in a in a full room that was green screen room yeah. with cameras mounted at three foot intervals all over the floor, all along the walls, all along the ceiling, so that you could film a scene from all these different angles and cut between the different angles. Wow. To get a and have more importantly, each camera rig, each of these camera rigs put at three foot intervals would mm-hmm. have three separate cameras filming at the time because this is back in the days of analog filming with the cameras nothing yeah. digital yeah. happening at this point where each well, digital was just in post yeah where the three cameras right mm-hmm. three different cameras filming the same scene mm-hmm. from roughly the same angles angle to be looking at roughly the same angle mm-hmm. at three different film speeds so you could alternate between film speeds Okay. So you could speed it up, slow it down, because at that time, if you wanted to all, if you wanted to make action look that way, you had to film at three different speeds at a time, or multiple oh. speeds. You had to change the speed of the, the camera that you're filming to make things look faster, okay. because the digital technology to do that hadn't come up to that point yet. Right. I have this idea. We watch this movie, and I'm just looking at him like, now, admittedly, the Wachowskis came up with the idea like two years before I did when they were right. making the movie, but at the same time, I'm 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 a 18 year old kid living in you know the middle of northern california yeah coming up with these thoughts and ideas and i'm like damn it <laughs> everybody's stealing my wonderful ideas you didn't get to see the matrix Threats. in the theater i did not it was a thing especially then it was a thing i've seen some good ones in the theater though i saw fight club in the theater wow yeah yeah, that see, was most a, of the stuff I caught on rental after it came home. Well, in Fight Club, Honestly, again, I don't see a lot of movies out in the theater well, anymore. Well, Fight Club, pre, pre, you know, early years of the internet. So watching Fight yeah. Club, uh, then it was such a shocker because there was very little in the way of spoilers to let you know what the heck was going on. Yeah, it was just, like, yeah, the first time I watched Fight Club and I had no real knowledge of it, I was just kind of watching the movie. And it was just like, what, itself. Wait, what, just, what just happened? Didn't read the book. What the heck? Didn't have anything crap. to go by? Yeah. That's one that actually... I can't say for sure that the book is better. I can say the book is a different experience. Interesting. But even the author of the book uh, would say has said about the same thing that it's just a different experience. Oh. He doesn't say the movie is. He says there's some things the movie did better, and some things he feels were a little better in his book. But for the most part, just just different experiences. The way he kind of chalks them up. Interesting. But okay. the same thing has been said recently about the. Uh, I don't know if you have caught the Good Omens uh, series on uh, Amazon. No. That was uh, oh, based Good on Omens the, uh, is the new uh, Neil Gaiman with- and Terry Pratch- Pratchett. They they wrote the the book originally. Oh no, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's got David Tennant and uh, yeah. Michael Sheen in it. Yeah, um, I believe t- Terry Pratchett is dead, but uh, Neil Gaiman has said that it's a pretty good. Well, it's not an exactly faithful adaptation. It's a really good adaptation. It's got its own kind of life to it. It's its own separate entity. Cool. All that, right, that's really neat. Um, but yeah, that, you haven't seen that one yet. You have Amazon Prime. I do. You should watch it. It's I a do. six. I think it's a six episode long series. It's it's got some really dark humor. It's it's very interesting though. Very interesting. Cool. When, you, when you do, go order you some pizza with a lot of meat on it, dude. I <laughs> you just talking about the pizza at the beginning makes me really want pizza. I know. I you know, funny enough, I've been craving it for weeks. The one night that, that I had it here, yeah, I, it was like feeding into that craving because I'd been craving it for about two weeks before that. Nice. And it's just, I don't know what it is, but right now I'm totally obsessed with pizza. Yeah. I mean, no, I get with, it. I get it. I've been obsessed with hamburgers before, but I actually almost, almost today, I'm going to get myself in trouble for admitting this, but almost today I went to that uh, California institution to, I almost went to the California Institution to get the hamburger to try it again. It's been years, so I was going to give it a whirl again. <laughs> um, but their line was way too full, so um, I, I went and got my nuggets instead. Oh, so I, I can had understand some food, that. Food stuff. 
Cool. That's why I had the, the nuggets here yes. to be eating. But So I, ha- I have some interesting information for you. What's that? Um, this is going to be a weird podcast. Yes, it is. Because it's not going to have a break at all. No, we've we're just... We're never going to put a break We're just going. In. Why not? We're the, not going to put a break in. Album 25, no break. Yes. Album 25. Album podcast 25. 25, no break. Album 25. What's wrong with me? How much time do you have? I can make a list. <laughs> no, I'm good. You, did it take you a second yep. to get the joke there? Yep. Here, I'm going to set this joke down. You pick it up whenever you're ready to. <laughs> the, that one was that, that was a good one earlier. Yeah. Huh. Um, but no, let's see. Where are we at now? Movies. Movies. TV shows. Pizza. Food. Do we need to go back to food? I mean, we can. We talked to the subway, right? We got all the subway order down. We did. We did so, do yes. the subway thing. P- people remember, if you're ever wanting to bring subway for, for Mike and James, food, that's the subway Food you would eat while high. We did that one. Food you would eat while high. Yeah. Stoner all, meals in general. All the cereal. There was that. All of the cereal. I all could, uh, cereal. dude, all of the cereal. That that I never thought about that, and now I'm probably going to probably at some point. Yeah. You may just try it for the hell of it. You know what? It, the pizza and the, and even we talked about ice cream. It reminds me of working at a old blockbuster. Oh yeah, one of the best parts about working there was the pizza place that was right there in the in the parking lot, the round table that was there. I was going to say it was a round table, and I I I personally love round table. I love round table too. Of the, My uh, wife is not a fan of round table. She doesn't like the sauce, if I remember correctly. I'm yeah, right. the sauce is really yeah. it's it's pretty it's pretty spicy. It's 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 got a it's got a brightness to it. There's something I like about that sauce though. It's good sauce. Um, good pizza sauce. I, I like it because it's normally I like a little bit of pizza crust, mm-hmm. but they don't really have the crust on on around the end. It goes the toppings kind of go to the edge. At round table? Yeah, there's only it depends a little on which tiny... crust you get. There's a sourdough crust that's fantastic. No. No? I get the regular crust. Oh man. Um but I, I just like the I just like the composition of their stuff. The the, the sauce gets yeah, a little spicy, mm-hmm. but it's not too heavy. The cheese is good. I yeah. love the various toppings that they have. But I love that one specifically. For some reason, that one tastes better than the other ones in the area that are up there in the Marysville Yuba City area. Is that it one. still there? Oh, it's still there. Oh yes. Oh man, oh, I yes, gotta take a there. trip. But remember what was right next door to it? No. Well, not right next door. Like a building or two down. There was a California yogurt. I don't know what the name of the place is now. It's still a yogurt place. Ever it had ice there. cream and frozen yogurt in it. And it was the best thing to go get some pizza and then go mm. to get frozen yogurt afterwards. Every Thursday was cookies and cream. Damn, those I guess I guess it was a far more bomb shopping center than I remember. Well, you remember getting Chinese food and sandwiches out of Bel Air, Dude, don't you? The Chinese food was really good. The Chinese food was good. The sandwiches were amazing there. Sandwiches were good too. Give me some turkey sandwich there. Mm-hmm. So good. They had that Dutch crunch bread. You know the Dutch crunch bread? I don't remember you know the Dutch, Dutch crunch, crunch bread. bread? Go to a, go to like a Rayleigh's or a Bel Air or something. You can yeah, get the Dutch there's crunch one, bread. There's one close. Um, it's like it's literally got like a crunchy exterior to it, and it's almost sweet on the outside. Oh, dude. Make some really good Sammies. Oh, that sounds really fantastic. Good Sammies. Yeah, I'm, I, I'll, 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 all I'm doing is filling Mike's head with, it's almost dinner time. I need to have dinner. Dude. I want some dinner. Dinner, dinner, dinner. Oh. <laughs> Is that all you're thinking He's about? He's making me hungry, man. Hey, it happens. Got to eat. Got to eat. Got to eat. Eating. That's some good lunch today. What did you have for lunch today? I went to, uh, there's a place called Sino's. Uh, Sino's, uh, it's it's a, just an Italian restaurant in general. Okay. Um, had a really good um, uh, spaghetti uh, bolognese. It's really good. Okay, cool. And uh, the wife had a, uh, a really killer grilled cheese sandwich. It was like grilled cheese. There was some bacon bits in it. It was on uh it was on garlic bread. Oh yeah. Um you know, soup on the side, so we had minestrone too. Okay. I've all I dude, minestrone is one of my favorite soups. I don't really think I've had a lot of minestrone soup. Minestrone is like I don't think I've ever had a bad minestrone. See, Even canned minestrone. Okay, gonna, it's a little salty, but it's not bad. I'm gonna throw something at you. You're all with the hot dog and the ketchup and stuff? Yeah. Um, how do you feel about grilled cheese with ketchup instead of tomato soup or the minestrone soup? Did you say with ketchup instead of tomato like, soup? Like more, normally people want to have grilled cheese. A bowl full of ketchup that you dip your grilled cheese in? Well, not like a bowl full, but like a, a, an appropriate like you dippable dip, amount. Uh, like I you mean, dip your french fries you have, in, I mean, in The in only it? thing missing from that at that point is like a burger and some bacon. Why not? Well, but I'm I'm willing to try anything. See, I I when I eat grilled cheese, I prefer to have ketchup instead of tomato soup. Just a little bit of ketchup to dip my oh, grilled cheese in. Okay, I, I'm you get down the tomato with tomato flavor, but I don't yeah. like the tomato soup as much. 
This is like it's a liquidy soup to me. Yes, if a soup to me, if a oh, soup dude, doesn't have, you should have, have tried the tomato soup that I had earlier today. Does it have chunks of tomato in it? Uh, not so much. That's chunks. wrong. No, not so that's much chunks. Wrong. But it was beautifully pureed, and it was a lot creamier. Okay, because like normally tomato soup is kind of thin, and it's like drinking basically yeah. tomato juice. And I'm not. Oh a tomato no, no, juice no, no, guy, no, no, no! Like this was not juice. that. This was it was good like. Thick tomato soup it was more like a bisque, I guess. Okay, but dude, they topped it with some. They topped it with some shredded, uh, shredded parmesan or shredded, yeah, shredded. Because I'm a soup guy that likes like lots of stuff in my soup. No, I get it. I can understand that. Like, See, this is why I like minestrone, but it's got to be good, like long, slow cooked pot minestrone. Okay, you know, pot cooked, uh, kettle cooked or pot cooked. Minestrone. Wait, doesn't minestrone have chunks of tomatoes in it too? Um, there. Because I might be out on that. I don't. But you can make minestrone without it, but most of the time I find there's noodles, there's different types of beans in it. Um, I'm there's cool with some beans. Other ve- there's some other vegetables. Like I think there might be a little onion. It depends on where you go. There's celery in it. Um, I'm cool. I'm cool with celery in it. Uh, but I like just, making like a beef a beef stew, which stew is slightly different. Yeah. But uh, but even like like if I make a chicken noodle soup, mm-hmm. I have like you know noodle, chicken, celery in there, carrot in there, maybe some potato in there. Um, I'll even put corn in there. I'm yeah okay yeah I can I can see that same thing that's with like, killer same thing when I do uh whenever I do um um oh god what's the southern chicken thing uh that's like soup but not really tortilla soup no southern <laughs> how not, well how not, southern that's deeper southern than you're thinking like like uh Paula Deen southern oh <laughs> not. Bad not, example. Not we don't need no stinking badges, Southern. <laughs> oh, come on, man. I'm trying to get you the idea here. Um, chicken and dumplings. There we go. Oh. Most people, most purists with chicken and dumplings. Paula is, Dean Southern. Yes. I'm trying to. I'm trying to, to under, make you understand below the Mason Dixon line. That that did it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but most people who are purists with chicken and dumplings, their, their chicken and dumplings have chicken. And dumplings, and that's it. And I'm the guy who has like five or six vegetables in there. I'll throw green beans, again, corn, uh, carrots, potatoes. I don't care. I see some carrots in it. Carrots make sense. Celery would make sense. Celery, I put celery in there. Corn actually makes a big deal in there. And so do green beans. I love having green beans in in a uh, in uh, my chicken and dumplings. Okay. I don't know why it is. I just For a fat guy, I actually like vegetables. I know. It's a shocker. <laughs> Like Brussels sprouts. I love Brussels sprouts. Oh, dude, Brussels sprouts are amazing. Are, oh, yeah, I'm not a fan of Brussels sprouts. Now that I think, sorry, I was. Depends I don't know on, why I was mistaking it with broccoli. I'm a fan of broccoli. Love the, the hell out of broccoli. Have you had Brussels sprouts pan fried before? What pan fried? I've. I don't think I've ever had pan fried Brussels sprouts. Okay, I've had Brussels sprouts the same way as Children, every kid that steamed, flipping hates steamed, Brussels sprouts steamed and, look, and looking like looking and feeling like snot. Yeah. No, no, no. Here's what you do. I do this on St. Patrick's Day. Instead of making the, the cabbage, mm-hmm. you know, most people do the corned beef, the cabbage, and the red potatoes. You're making me hungry, bro. I do the corned beef. All right. I do the red potatoes. Okay. Hey, by the way, I'm making you hungry. Welcome to my world. I'm always hungry. Moving <laughs> on. Um, I do the corned beef. I do the red potatoes. But instead of doing the cabbage, okay. I take Brussels sprouts. You have to get fresh ones for this. You can't okay. get frozen pieces of crap. All right. Cut the Brussels sprouts in half. Okay. Okay. You take the flat side, which should be like the middle of it that you've made, and okay. you cut it in half like like here's the sprout vertically yeah, in half. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You cut it in half. You get some, you get a pan with, hell, use olive oil because olive oil, while it has a low smoke point, it's a little bit healthier as far as the oils go. Okay. okay. It's best to use in bacon fat, but who has bacon fat lying around anymore? So use the olive oil. Okay. okay. You just want to go on kind of medium temp. Mm-hmm. Ha- put, all, put the Brussels sprouts in the pan. Okay. With the cut side down. Okay. Yep. Take take a lid, mm-hmm. lid the pan while you're cooking it. Okay. Now let it cook for a little bit. I'm going to say about five minutes or so, but don't. Have, it's not an exact time. You really you're not adding look. anything to it. It's just straight no, up just Brussels sprouts and olive oil. Olive oil. You can put a little salt and pepper. Okay. That's it. Pull okay. pull off the lid. And you start checking your Brussels sprouts. See if they started to brown because you want them to brown okay. on the one side. You don't want them to sense. blacken. You just want them to brown. Okay. If they've all started to brown, flip them over. Okay. Flat side up. As you're flipping them over, kind of squeeze them with like whatever tongs you're using to flip them. Mm-hmm. See if they're starting to get a little soft. You don't want them too soft. You just want them a little soft. Okay. If they're not quite, a, if they're not quite a little soft, take and put a little bit of water in there. 
Just a little bit. Into the pan. Into the pan. Okay. Put the lid back on. Now you're doing a little bit of steaming action. There you want to check it every two to three That'll minutes. That'll soften it, okay. You want to soften them up just a little bit and get them just soft enough where you can, like with a pair of tongs, squish them a little, mm-hmm. but not where you squish them and they just banana on you. Right. Okay? Okay. Banana's a good a good thing to use as a kind of too squishy. For yeah, yeah, yeah. I can understand that. You get them that little bit uh-huh. of squishy, pull them out, put a little bit more salt and pepper on them. Not a lot, just a little bit. Okay. Boom, there you go. Huh. Okay. They'll be just chewy enough that they'll have they'll have some some chew to them, but again, soft, so they're not just like eating a leaf, eating a hard yeah. leaf. Yeah, okay. But the flavor that comes out of them, actually really good. Now, you may still not like it, and that's fine, because some people just still don't like Brussels sprouts or something about the flavor of them they don't like. Right. But if the texture has been the main turnoff for them, this is the way to get them with a good texture without having to worry about that soggy, mushy mess that okay. usually comes out of them. That's, that's interesting. That's that's my way of, of going about having Brussels sprouts. That's the first way I ever had them because I never had them as a kid. They weren't allowed in my house as a kid. So, oh. hey, the, having the mom that puts ketchup on 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 uh, you know a, a taco and and ketchup on their eggs and whatnot that ketchup does, on the eggs doesn't sound so that bad does to me. Seem kind of weird. On a taco man. I know. I you, know. You guys didn't have no taco sauce sitting in the house. No. What? The ground beef had like the ground beef for the tacos had like uh, salt and pepper in it, maybe maybe a little garlic salt in it, because garlic salt was in everything. You didn't throw got to, did you throw the damn taco sauce on top of the? On there top was of no the taco. Ta- there was no taco sauce. Taco sauce but did it's not for tacos. exist. It didn't exist in the house. Did not exist. Your mom was incorrect. Yes, <laughs> I am not disagreeing <laughs> with you on that. <laughs> Um, the only thing, the the only thing my mother made correctly as a food item was probably her chicken fried steak. And even that was a little oversalted. Oh, okay. But she, she actually, my father still has the plate, the plate that she would use to beat the chicken, the the steak to Mm -hmm. tenderize it for chicken fried steak. Have you ever made chicken fried steak, sir? Uh, it's been a very, very long time. The, the real key to good chicken fried steak is you have to tenderize the meat well enough and have it soak in milk with the acids that are in milk. I'm not enough. confused at the, I am not. The fact con- that she used a plate. Instead she used the edge of, of a plate instead of like a meat mallet or something like that. She used the edge of, so she edge would, of a plate. Take so the plate. she would beat raw chicken with a plate. Like no, not chicken. chicken not on chicken, cutting not board. chicken. Beef. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Chicken fried steak. I'm sorry. Beef. So she would beat the beef with a plate? The, the edge of a plate. Yes. Oh, the edge oh, of a plate. Edge of a plate. Why didn't you have? You didn't have a meat tenderizer. Yes, we did. But she used the plate. But that was the okay. Did you ever use the plate for anything else? No, nope. I'm curious. That plate was only used no. for doing chicken fried. That steak. was the meat beating. But let me plate. tell you something. Let me tell you something. When you had your chicken fried steak, guess mm-hmm. what? You could cut it with a fork, which is the mark cool. of a good chicken fried steak. A good chicken fried steak you should be able to cut with your fork. If you need to use a knife to cut chicken fried steak, it is not made right. I can agree with that. The meat is not tenderized enough. I can agree with that. Because it needs to be super, super tender for it to be right. There's actually, I had chicken fried steak just up the street from here at a small cafe that char, they, they charbroil their okay. stuff. Um, it you, wasn't charbroiled chicken fried say, steak. You do not charbroil chicken fried steak. No, sir. but they do know how to cook any steak. Like their sirloin, they're like six ounce sirloin. That's the best sirloin I've had in town. This would be a place I'd, I'd have to try a porterhouse and see how it is. Uh, if they have a porterhouse, I'm not sure. It's not like a large. It's it's a cafe. It's it's not like a. Well, then they at least have a T-bone, which is the same cut of meat, just a smaller portion. Of they it. may they may have that. I think they actually do. But um, it, it's it's a cafe. It's not like a full grill. But I'll be damned if it's if that isn't like the best steak in town. Well, you say chicken fried steak, I may have to try it because that's but my the chicken fried steak is soft enough to cut. With well, that's pork. that's my go to when whenever a place calls itself a diner. Mm-hmm. If the restaurant says I'm a diner, mm-hmm. and all right, I'm gonna go in there and first thing I'm gonna order is a chicken fried steak because to me that's a diner food product. Gotcha. And if chicken fried steak doesn't come out right, or if I can tell that it's a frozen one that they just unfreeze and you know plop in the fryer mm-hmm. and the you can tell the gravy is some canned or boxed or bagged gravy that they just right. mix okay you're not a real diner you just pretend to be a diner well at that at that point we i I would probably take you to kim's kim's yeah kim's country kitchen's just up the street we're gonna have to find some places to eat sir yeah man 
We're going to have to make a point of it. Boy, how have I not introduced all these places to you? There's Mexican restaurants out here that are fantastic. And I'm talking like the little greasy hole-in-the-wall grills. Oh, yeah. Not like the, I mean, don't get me wrong, Chihuahua Mexican is fantastic. I love that kind of stuff. Like, uh, uh, There's a place called uh, uh, Castle Ramos out here. Dude, I don't know. I just, I just, I mean, I'm waiting until the the apocalypse to start eating dogs. I just want to let you know that. Not that kind of Chihuahua. (laughs) Damn it! Um, but yeah, Which like, actually, I don't really know the difference between the various regions of, of Mexico and their different food stylings. I just I know only that, know that because that's actually that was told to me by a guy who ran a Chihuahua Mexican yeah. restaurant. He's like, "Oh, that's this style." Yeah, I was like, "So there's well, like, Chihuahua like, Mexican," and then I was like, "Is it Jalisco Mexican food?" They're like, "Yes." I went, "Oh, so the Jalisco Grills, all called Jalisco Grill." It's not a business name. It's the style of the food. Well, it's like you know, it's, the greaseball yeah. place that takes Polaroids of their stuff and then blows them up and throws them on the wall. Like, you know, they take their own pictures, their own food that they cook in the restaurant. Those kinds of places. You know okay. what I'm talking about, right? Kind of. That Okay. So that's more like a Jalisco type grill. Okay. Um but yeah, those are those are a completely different style of Mexican food than the Mexican food that you'll yeah. find that's like in the super nice place that like sits you down and like takes your order and well, that I kind know, of stuff. I know like, a, like an Italian restaurant or something. I know like there's that. like the, there's multiple types of uh of uh, Chinese food restaurants. Yeah. If you get to a place that's actually cultured enough to have multiple types of Chinese food. Mm-hmm. And most of what we eat is basically the fast food version, like the McDonald's version of uh yeah. of Chinese food. Yeah. Basically. I mean, a real hamburger looks nothing like the the hamburgers that you get really at McDonald's. Right, right. And that's kind of how the Chinese food we eat in places like Panda and stuff like that, which means they're still good. It's like McDonald's still has things that are good, but it's not the true. Yeah, it's yeah, exactly. Food of it's the, like you you go there and you come to terms with the fact that you're not getting what's in the commercial. Well, it's not even that. It's you're not getting what people are actually eating in China. Oh, you're not getting oh, the Lord, same no. food they're mm-hmm. eating there. Uh, uh-uh, so, absolutely not. But all right, sir. Well, you know what's funny? This is a strange conversation. You know what's really funny about this? What's this? You were concerned uh, an hour and 12 minutes ago <laughs> that if we just started talking about things, we wouldn't be able to fill a podcast. Well, guess what we did? Well, I In guess ways, the... this is the... This is one of the more amusing ones that we've had because it's just been kind of a... The, le, like people a, listening, people listening, for some of you, this will sound familiar because this is literally what a conversation between me and Mike, <laughs> sounds like on a regular basis. This I guess is just this is how good, we talk about things. Yeah, I guess this is a good theme for what a, a, a I guess it's kind of a milestone episode, 25 in. Yeah. And you it's, know, just I, it's a good theme. Talking. Just like, hey, this is what we just talk about in general when we're not trying to have like specific subject matters in mind. This is what happens for at Uncomposed. least. This is what happens for at least 45 minutes before we start recording a podcast and possibly 45 minutes after we record a podcast. Yeah. We just have conversations like this. Guess what? You just got a little insight on how uh, James and Mike conversate with each other yeah. on a regular basis. Hope you enjoyed. Yeah. Hope we've made you all hungry too. <laughs> right. I know I'm going to be uh, fighting myself on whether to grab food before I get on my way home I was going to say, not. now I got to go beg my wife to see whether or not we're going to have pizza. I don't know yet. <laughs> <sighs> you put you put the bug in my ear, man. Sorry. Hey, keep in mind they have a deal on Monday nights. Eight ninety nine one one topping pizza, I think. Oh my! Yeah, it's only a one topping, but still eight ninety nine. That's not bad. It's that's large. the place we were talking about. Yeah. Oh it's man, got that night special. Oh, that's right. It's also got the other special for like twenty three something. You can buy a, a large three topping and then a large one topping. But honestly, I don't think you need both pizzas because you don't subscribe to my pizza eating philosophy. <laughs> one, one large is enough for you and your wife. Yeah. One large is barely real. enough for me, but that's all right. I mean, we'll still have a couple of pieces to eat the next day, but we're not going to feed ourselves for a week on that. One large would not feed me for a week. No, I, I, I eat a lot of pizza. One large would feed me for a week. That's because that's because you don't have my philosophy. Anything less than three pieces is not worth your time and effort, sir. Oh, okay. Anything more than six pieces is is you know applause. Oh, okay. I can like, understand. I, yeah, in, I stop in one at, sitting. I stop. I max out at like four, and I'm like, I can't do anymore. I. I actually had one. I, I joke about it and and you know make make light of it. But I actually had one night where I ate an entire large pizza at at the round table. Interestingly enough, by our by our old blockbuster, I had an entire large pizza myself. I was meeting some of my wife's family, uh, uh, uncles, aunts. Did they like that. not show? And you're like, I've got all this pizza. No. I might as well do something about it. No, they were there. And we had a bunch you, of pizza. <laughs> you ate the pizza in front of these people. There was just a bunch of pizza. I was just nervous as hell. So I just kept oh. eating pizza. It's one of the few times I was nervous because these were like important family members for her. 
So you were. So this is one of the first times I, I'm meeting them, and I was just normally I'm not very nervous about meeting family members and whatnot. Right. But I think it had been a pretty roller coaster year, or so meeting her family, and she had a very she has a very large extended family. Right. Like um, half of the town of uh, Live Oak, California, at one point was was related to her in some way, shape, or form. Holy smokes! So she had a pretty large extended family. Okay. Um, and I'd met a whole bunch of them in various situations that had been like, you know, a couple of holidays where too many people were crammed into way too small a space. Imagine a room the size of the room that we're doing this recording in. And like, actually imagine a place the size of your house okay. and like 50 people in your house. Yeah. No. Yes. This is what would ha- was happening at these families. That's a bunch of nope for me. Yeah. Holy smokes. Way too many damn people. You can't even move around in there. Not that. really. No, it was frightening. Um, so this is just a dinner out at the, at the pizza place and, Um, there was just a pizza in front of me and I just kept eating pieces of pizza and just kept eating pieces of pizza. And the next thing I know, the whole pizza's gone. (laughs) You're like, now what do I do? (laughs) It was a weird night. It was the only time I've ever put down a full large pizza by myself. And funny part is I was like 180 pounds lighter than I am now. Wow. So I was like half of me. Dang. And I still put down that much pizza. Hey, you know, sometimes you do extreme. Th- sometimes I, people do extreme things in uh, it, nervous, yeah, anxious it, situations, it, it, man. It happened. Yeah. All right, sir. We'll wrap this up for the day. Uh, do your normal. Where can people listen to us? Well, you can listen to us on the com, or if you can't type that much or don't want to type that much, you can go to zencron.com, spelled X-E-N-C-H-R-O-N. By the way, hold on. It's it, We're 25 episodes in. People, bookmark us. <laughs> type it in one time. <laughs> bookmark zencron.com, damn it. Just type it in the one time. The whole type the whole thing in the one time. Just for the fun of it. Just so you can get all those letters. Just so you can work on your typing skills for when you're doing your resumes. Because we all yeah. need to do some at some point. Yeah. Type it all in. Bookmark that thing. Come on, give us the love. Move on. Well, you could do that, or you could just look us up on the various podcasting apps that we have. That too. Such as tune in. We are on Google Podcast. We are also on Spotify. Um, you also can check us out if uh, if you are looking us up on YouTube, you look up the Zenial Chronicles on YouTube or Zencron on Facebook or Zencron on Twitter. Uh, you can follow us on YouTube. You can subscribe to our channel uh, and hit the bell icon and also like the video if you're hearing this on the uh, video itself. Yes. Uh, that way you'll get notified next time we actually come up with another podcast. And yeah. Also feel free on YouTube and on Facebook to please comment or send us messages we will respond to them uh we'll also be more than glad to talk about anything on our podcast that you would like us to talk about any topics uh well not any topics uh we still stay away from uh stuff that's too religious or too uh political just so that we're not getting into those uh areas of, of offending too many people yeah but uh otherwise heck you want us to talk about it we will talk about it the best that we can all right yeah Thank you all for listening. Hope you enjoyed this little slice of conversation. Get yourself something to eat. And we'll talk to you later. Have a good one. Thank you for tuning in, friends. The journey continues next week.